Ah, oh, this is a beautiful evening. Here's the sun. Here's the waters. The ship. Some of the best weather we've had for a little while. A little bit chilly. I'm in my t-shirt here. I wasn't planning to be uh, outside for long. Um, but yeah, we've got some, some nice sunshine. I think we've got another storm tonight. I hope it doesn't last as long as the other one, which was a four day storm, which is just ridiculous. But you know, the ship only travels 20 miles an hour. And um, yeah, but it's just nice looking at the water um, act on the ocean. It's beautiful. Leave it there. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself, or know your nation, know yourself. The two are interchangeable. All right, now with this video, this is very interesting. So what you're going to see is you're going to see my clothes change, yeah? Because this here, what you're going to be getting at the start of this video is a little update because I'll tell you something very interesting has happened. I did a reading on the uh, hurricane uh, happening uh, in Florida right now. I was probably made land for around right about now. And something very interesting has happened. So in this video, I was talking about that, that hurricane. And I did a read on the political, the potential political fallout for the hurricane, which is still relevant. Uh, and But what's happened is the wind speeds for that hurricane have changed. It was uh, offshore. It was a category five. Now I think it's reduced to a category three, which is still horrendous, but better than a category five. Those wind speeds were gusting at 200 miles an hour at one point. They are no longer gusting at 200 miles an hour. I think it's uh, in the hundreds somewhere. <clears throat> but storm surge and all of this stuff, you know, is still a very, very difficult storm. So the reading that I did uh, for that storm still stands. But I'll just cut the, the, the first part out because there's, there's no point. It's now old information. And as you know, I like to be up to date with these things. What I also uh, did was in the video, I talked a little about a bit about Nomad Cruise and one of the uh, uh, offshore excursions that I was going to attend in a place called Kushiro, Kushiro Island, which is in the very north of Japan. And I put up pictures, I'll see them there, but I might have to put little red X's through them of, um, you know, the cranes and seeing the nature and all of this stuff, which is what I was hoping to do. But guess what? Ironically, because of a cyclone that is now developing in uh, the seas off the coast of Japan, I remember as well, Japan has had a lot of problems with storms. And one of the things I spoke about in my uh, talking about the hurricane Milton in the Florida is my prediction uh, uh, is that um, Neptune will be causing more storms. You remember me saying that I've I've gone into a bit more detail in the video, so I won't explain again. But Neptune. Anyway, so the irony is we were supposed to be docking on shore. We filled out all of our immigration forms and all of this stuff for Kashiro. We can now no longer go to Kashiro because of this cyclone. So my journey here is now, even though I'm out in the Pacific Ocean, has also been affected, you know, by the storms. Now, of course, I dialed in with Neptune. Yeah. And asked him for protection, all of this stuff. Oh, oh, Gusty's in this one. It's all right, Gusty. I'm just filming um, a little uh, update on a video that I've uh, put out before. So this video, because of the Internet <clears throat> is so slow. Oh, no, you're, you're all good. You're all good. Because the Internet is uh, so ridiculously slow here. When I tried to upload that video, which is now gone, um, which is now since uh, out of time. It's taken hours. I even borrowed someone's higher speed internet and it's still only just uploaded now. So for those of mine who are uh, in my membership, <laughs> I can see you can starve in the reflection. <laughs> for those of you that are part of my membership, you're going to get that original video. Yeah, which, you know, whatever. So you guys get that. And then what everyone's going to be seeing is the video with this part tacked on to the front. But you're still going to get the reading on the hurricane and maybe the political fallout. And uh, what else did I want to say? Uh, but the stuff where I'm talking about Kishiro and all of that stuff is now no longer relevant because it's been cancelled ironically due to a cyclone developing off the coast of Japan so I'm in for another bumpy night 
When we were on the ship, I endured a four-day storm, which I just never thought was something that I would have in my whole life, but the ship only moves 20 miles an hour. So when you're in a storm that's the size of Alaska, guess what? You spend a lot of time, and even now I can feel the boat is rocking a bit more. So I hope that makes things clear. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to tack this one onto that original edit, do a little magic, upload again, and hopefully maybe by tomorrow it will upload uh so you will actually be getting this thursday fry up on the thursday rather than on the wednesday from the future as i anticipated it would be but such is life technology and nature are often things that we can't control at all anyway i will leave it there enjoy the video all right well, hello everyone and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself, or know your nation, know yourself. The two are interchangeable. Okay, so today, so this, this Thursday fry-up is, is a Thursday fry-up with a little bit of a difference because uh, very much kind of like uh, now I'm in Lena Rodriguez's uh, <laughs> shoes because I am shooting this from the future. Uh, as you guys know, I am uh, on uh, something which is called a Nomad Cruise, Digital Nomad uh, Cruise, which essentially it's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 a, it's a business conference. Essentially, it's a, a business conference held on the sea, but uh, with a difference. So it's a lot of people that are uh, um, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, nomadic, or maybe with, with their career, they're, they're working from their laptops and stuff like that. And we've come together to give each other support uh, and advice um, about the sort of like the nomadic life, etc. As you guys know, I am normally based uh, in London. Some people here travel absolutely uh, full time. But it's a fantastic uh, uh, community. Uh, absolutely love the people here. And there's been some very powerful workshops as well. So it's not all just business. It's also about uh, spirituality, well-being, uh, mental and emotional um, health uh, as well. There's been some fabulous uh, workshops like where intently you have to look into each other's eyes and do uh, exercises around trust, forgiveness, breath work etc it has been very 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 interesting and uh, i look forward to the next one which is going to be epic i think that might be going to australia but this is not until um 2025 so what i uh so just so you know you've got the on uh, context of you know why i'm on the ship etc and stuff like that and also as well just to give a big shout out to nomad uh digital nomad cruise i think i will put a link in the uh video uh, video uh description and the mastermind of this is a gentleman called johannes so um a big thank you to him uh for helping to bring all these people together okay so with this show normally as you guys know i do my thursday fry up live but because I am now, it's been, it's been a bit disorientating. So in the videos in, in the past, I was going into the past because I was going back in time. Now that I've crossed the international timeline, uh, which were, oh look here, this isn't my certificate, but this is my friend Gustav. So look, look, you get, you get an international, you know, um, you get a certificate for passing the international timeline. So before that happened, those shows that I was doing were coming from the past because I was behind American time. Now they're coming from the future. So we lost a whole day and now I'm ahead of time. So when I'm filming, now that I'm filming this, it is now Thursday, my Australian time in Brisbane. But tomorrow, when we hit Kushiro, it's going to be Japanese time. But for now, for me, at the time of shooting this video, it is Thursday morning around about 10.30 or something like that. But now that I'm filming this, this is actually Wednesday for most of my audience, either in the UK or America. So it's a little... I have someone just... Hello? Uh, oh, uh... Okay, one minute, one minute. Let me just pause the video. My laundry's come. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> Whenever I film a video, uh, they, they come in anyway. So they've just they've just given me my laundry. 
uh, because of course there's yeah there yeah. That, that's my laundry there just in case you, you guys were wondering what that interruption was about okay anyway back to um, what I was talking about so what I've done is in this Thursday fry up I can't do it live because it turns out the live time is my Friday morning and I have a, an excursion along with a lot of people on the ship <clears throat> going to Kushiro um, Island which is famed for its nature, there should be cranes and all of this kind of stuff going on, <clears throat> flying around. And after uh, that, uh, we have to disembark in the morning, go through international customs, and we're going to be collected at 9 a.m. Uh, so that actually turns out to be a clash with what would normally be my Thursday fry-up time. So you guys are going to get this video effectively early. It's pre-recorded, but what I've done is... With your questions for Hogley, but I wasn't able to read out at the time because, again, there was the time difference. So basically, we've been traveling and it's 25 hour days, 25 hours days. So each day we pass into a new time zone, which, of course, affects the timing of when I put up the show. So you can imagine it's been it's been pretty confusing. <clears throat> so the correct time for Thursday fry up is my Friday morning, but I'm going to be on an excursion to Kashiro Island, so that's why I'm doing it now. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, one of the things, uh, so I've taken the questions from Hogali <clears throat> that I wasn't able to answer, and now I'm going to answer uh, most of those in this Thursday fry up show. Okay, so one of the things we're going to talk about, uh, we have to talk about Hurricane Milton, which is just about at the time of um, doing this video. I think this hurricane is just about to hit Florida. So we're going to be, I want to read on that and, it, and its ramifications. Then there's a question for Canada, then Laura Luma, and then the, a general read for the world in 2025, one on African history. SpaceX, and then I'm going to close the show uh, with the US elections general read. Okay, so let's get stuck in. I think that's about f five minutes all in. So, um, yeah, we've got about 50 minutes, something like that. Right, so I want to read some cards. We'll do Shakespeare on Laura Luma as well. I want to do some cards on Hurricane Milton. Now, um, most of you guys will be familiar with the situation happening in Florida now. Um, I think this is the third major storm to hit Florida. From what I understand, Milton, Hurricane Milton could be the most destructive uh, hurricane on record for Florida's Gulf Coast. And it's going to span from Miami to Savannah. <clears throat> and what I put here in my notes here, I put uh, to say, remind people of my predictions. So I print, I think I've said it before in the Hogley, but it's just worth saying again. You'll remember, I can't remember when precisely, but la last year, at some point last year, do you remember I warned everyone? And I said one of the consequences of Neptune being in sidereal Pisces was that we were going to get a lot more uh, weather events, storms on Earth, water, 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 because what we need to remember is because of the global warming, it's warming up the oceans of the world. And the warmer they get, the more powerful the storms become. One of the warmest places uh, or water places on Earth is the Gulf of Mexico. And I think it was either a year ago, it could have been 18 months, I forget, because it's close to almost 600 videos I've done now. But I was, when I was tuning in with Neptune, as you know, I, I tune in with the planets, meditate with them, and they, they show me things, what, what's coming. And I remember Neptune's warning. Neptune was like, get ready. And he, and he was showing me the Gulf of Mexico in particular. I can't remember which video it was that I said, but I said there's going to be whoppers, absolute whoppers. And I said, that I think there will be at least three. I think there may be, um, there could even be a couple of more after this. But this uh, Milton is the, is an absolute doozy. So from what I understand, I've posted in my community channel a little video from CNN, which I saw, which at that time, that video was only 12 minutes old. 
So it means it was probably being reported on Wednesday in America and the storm is kind of making landfall around about now or maybe a few hours from now, depending when you guys watch this video. And it is sustained gusts from what I understand of 165. No, no, 165, it could even be higher, but the top gusts are said to be 200 miles per hour. 200. My American contacts on the ground have been giving me um, updated uh, information, and apparently uh, Ron DeSantis has said, do not stay because you will die. I mean, he's been unvarnished in his language. And he's been encouraging people. Now, this for me is really mind bending. He's been encouraging people to write their social security numbers, their names and necks of kin on their bodies in marker pen in case they don't survive. And I've also been hearing stuff that isn't in the main main news that they're still doing a lot of body recovery from the previous storm, which I think was Helene, uh, as far as the Carolinas. So, um, and uh, I've been told hundreds of people died from that hurricane. So, of course, this is um, extraordinary, extremely difficult, uh, and uh, not very traumatic for 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 a lot of people. It's been interesting um, gauging the American uh, response for those that are on abroad with the ship uh, with me here. I think it's probably quite hard to believe, you know, what, what these kind of uh, numbers uh, will mean. But we will, of course, soon uh, find out. And some of the people on the ship here are actually uh, from uh, Florida. So um, let's read on the general energies of that. Someone was saying to me, instead of <laughs> informing people that I might have to move my retreat next year, that um, I should consider creating a... A fundraiser or something like that and um which isn't a bad idea but i, I don't know how I'd, on earth i would do that from my um the boat here traversing all these time zones in um in the middle of the pacific ocean but one of the things i did say to them is that we need uh politicians and particularly quite a few American politicians to really start taking this stuff seriously and not to be spreading conspiracy theories about what's really causing this weather. So anyway, the hurricane, Hurricane Milton. And my question really is, is uh, what other potential, what's the potential political impact of this? Will people st still keep going with their BS? Hmm. That card fell out. Let's get this going. Hurricane Milton, just a political fallout. Hurricane Milton, just a political, potential political fallout. Hmm. Ah, ah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, potential political fallout. First of all, hmm. Oh God, it's always backwards here. Here, you'll see here we have the merchant with the two of wands. The twos are all about making decisions. The two of swords, of course, is about trying to delay, you know, uh, an inevitable decision of some kind. Not wanting to face the truth, not wanting to face uh, reality. Or trying to avoid something that, that is difficult. The two of wands, however, is much more about making plans. So if we see here, look, you'll notice there is a, the globe is here and how pertinent. Because, of course, this is affecting the whole globe. I shared a video clip, uh, which was from UK Sky News, something like that, on my community channel. Which was, which was of a weather forecaster kind of breaking down a little bit. He was having an emotional moment when he realised that this, uh, what was effectively a tropical storm, had gone up to a Cat 5. So what this um, <clears throat> showing here is that we need to recognise that this is a global uh, issue. The... The amount of storms isn't necessarily going up, but what is happening is, is that the intensity of them is. And one of the things I've been explaining to uh, some of the people that are Americans that I've been meeting here on the ship 
because this is by the way this is a very disorienting place by the way it's lovely but it's it's not real it's like a kind of like a fantasy you really don't know where you are and quite literally in terms of geography and time and i was explain i was explaining to them that you know um these storms are going to have huge impact but they're happening all over all over the world so you can see here this is the merchant looking out you've got the water here the the oceans are warming so i think the main thing is for here particularly is for those us politicians that are not grasping the nettle on this this is for globally but we know the ones in particular that are still denying climate change and all of this kind of stuff and it's like how many superstorms do do you need to have people like but they're seeding the clouds yes seeding clouds does produce precipitation rain but you cannot see the cloud to produce a cat five hurricane of 200 mile an hour winds you can't what you need is a warm ocean bodies of warm water as global warming increases global as that heat increases this is wands which is what the element of fire heat literally you can see here the, this this card is literally talking about heat global heat we can interpret it that way quite literally this is what gives the storms their power when they go over the uh, the gulf of mexico they pick up strength and speed normally when they cover land they weaken a little bit but it looks like it's gonna slam in just before so heat globally maybe people are starting to pay attention at last <clears throat> but look at the obstacle card here it is the hanged man. So you can see here there is a reluctance. This is the issue that the, the hanged man is about not moving forward. It's a state of suspension, as you can see, but the person can actually get themselves free. So what this shows is, is that uh, at least politically, there are still some people on the fence because it suits them to be politically on the fence, to not do anything. Obviously, people don't want to change their lives, etc., lifestyles or, you know, what have you. Keep the status quo going. This is human nature. Yeah, people do not like change. However, let's not forget, though, with the... Uh, with the hanged man, this is also about a change in perspective seeing things from a different perspective i think that this storm could be so devastating that it will demand a change of perspective 200 mile an hour winds guys tornado warnings already i've seen some of the big twisters happening already and this thing hasn't even made landfall yet at least not at that time of this video by the time you see this this hurricane could have already hit land. So look, we're seeing here, so there is that reluctance to make the change because it's turning in the obstacle position. But nonetheless, there could be a change of perspective coming, particularly when you see the next card here. If we look here, we have got the Ace of Swords, which of course is about truth, yeah? The Ace of Swords is <clears throat> the no BS card. This is slicing through the BS yeah this storm is going to slice through a lot of people's bs yes you're going to have people coming up with bs saying this this storm was manufactured by the government for political reasons and stuff like that and it's like just think about it oh i know i want to cause my own country billions if not trillions of dollars worth of damage each year <clears throat> just to put the nose out of the opposition yeah just to piss off the GOP, like, like, come on, let, let, let's get a sense of perspective here. You know, there are stuff, there is stuff like this, but this sword of truth, it, people need to wake up. It's because of, of climate change. You can debate what are the generating factors, whether it's historical, we're coming out of a highest rage or whatever, but either way, it's all warming up and it's time for the truth and it's time for people to stop BSing and gaslighting this situation. If we look here, there's going to be a tremendous amount of work, work, work to rebuild, yeah, work to rebuild infrastructure, yeah, cabling, everything's blowing over. I've already seen the pictures of the, everything's like this already. This is before the 200 mile an hour wind, by the way, when the 200 mile an hour wind comes, it's going to be like that, yeah, it's just going to be flat. 
Uh, and then, of course, you're going to have Storm Surge. People's rose... Anyway, I don't need to go over the details and potential horror of this. We're going to see it. We're going to see it for ourselves. So look, in terms of global action, there needs to be a tremendous amount of work. But look at the outcome card. Yeah, it's the Eight of Cups. Some people are literally going to have to walk away because one of the things that I've been seeing and what I've been warning about is that some areas on earth but particularly in florida it seems like all that gulf of mexico region will eventually become uninhabitable it's already uninsurable many of the places but look this is the card of walking away this is also talking about the evacuation this time millions have been evacuated millions are literally leaving their homes but this also shows as well that they may not even be able to come back because there might not be anything there you can't live on a stump a rump of what was your house or what was your neighborhood and i understand certain neighborhoods have been devastated already and this is what when i was doing my meditations with neptune and asking him what was in the the plan because i'm completely in neptune's element right now yeah or on a ship in the great ocean, I'll turn the camera around, but I don't want to mess up the angle. Um, and his statue, there's a statue of him here on board. And every day I've been, you know, give it, giving his, uh, uh, acknowledging him, you know, with a touch on the arm and just tuning in. And it, everything that he showed me that was going to be happening before he moved into sidereal Pisces on the 22nd of February, 2023, is now coming true so he was giving me a heads up on this in sort of like 2022 you know throughout 2023 and this is why i was giving this warnings and now of course it's all coming true so um there will be a political impact but one of the big political impacts is that there are just going to be less people living in the florida panhandle uh, region in general because it's probably going to become uninhabitable unless there is radical radical change so thanks for well i say thanks for the question that was effectively my one all right now i'm going to move over to uh canada and uh this one's coming um lib something anyway they say in Canada, our parliament has been suspended until the Liberal Party, here I just had to write down in my book, until the Liberal Party uh, hands over unredacted files to the RCMP. So I had to look this up. So that is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The federal, uh, which is the federal police, uh, police force, except in Ontario and Quebec. So this person didn't write this. I just looked it up because I didn't know what the RCMP uh, is, frankly. <laughs> anyway, now now we know. Um, so my question is, will they be made to hand over this information or will they prorogue parliament or call an election to hide these documents? Is this a tower moment? So I think when they say the Liberal Party, I'm assuming they're probably talking about Trudeau's government. So this seems to be an interesting development, doesn't it, folks? I'm just going to pull the cards and let's see what they have to say. Will they, what is that? Will they hand over the information or will they prorogue Parliament or call an early election? Now, isn't it interesting? I did a read on Canada a few months ago and I said that People were asking, could there be an early election? I said there could be. It could happen in 2024. From what I understand, the general election in Canada is scheduled for, I think, quite early 2025. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking April-ish, spring. But it could be this year. On my previous read. So let's see. Well, I hand over the documents. Will they prorogue Parliament and call an early election? What's the energy in this? For these unredacted documents. Oh, a rare bit of sunshine emerging. OK. 
Okay, and coming up, Laura Luma. What else? World. 2025, African history, SpaceX, and U.S. elections. Ooh, now this is interesting. <sighs> okay, say what you see, Huggy. Straight off the bat, we get the King of Pentacles. Now, we know what this card is about. This is often talking about the establishment figure, very often the leader or, uh, or, of a nation. So I'm thinking this is probably talking about Trudeau, actually. Now... Uh, this card here, as you can see, uh, the King of Pentacles, of course, is all about what? Well, yeah, the money, the wealth, etc. So this is talking about a man. It doesn't have to be a man, but it's usually a, ma a man that has accrued uh, great wealth and, and success, uh, money and riches. Yeah, this is what it's about here. You can see him holding the coin. Uh, his robe is covered in uh, grapes showing uh, his his fecundity and his abundance. If you look here as well, this is a very Taurian card because you literally have the bull's heads here. So this really is talking about uh, Taurus, particularly on the more materialistic side of uh, food, uh, abundance, uh, asset classes of all kinds. Let's not forget that's what uh, Taurus deals with. So what this is saying to me, I'm suspecting this must be talking about Trudeau or certain leaders within because she said the liberal government, so I think he's liberal, isn't it? Because the other side is more conservative. So my instinct is that this must this this must be Trudeau or those in his cabinet. And what I do know is that he did get some criticism, didn't he? Um, a little while ago, oh, I'm getting some messages coming in. They have issued mandatory evacuations. Um, so on my on my WhatsApp group, my Santa Fe WhatsApp group. That just popped up in my notification now. Uh, people give me info. So, uh, and I understand he's uh, except holidays and, you know, all these different things. I wanna, don't want to get into the short and curlies of this because I don't know enough about it. But there's been snippets. So here, but this is about wealth, money. Um, and when we're talking about politics, of course, as we know, when you get wealth and money in politics, it's not always uh, always above board. Let's just put it that way. If we look here in the obstacle position, we get the Ten of Cups. So again, this is the card which is always talking about essentially family values. But when we read on politics, very often this can talk about um, the, family, the, the traditional family values that aren't necessarily maybe being lived up to in principle. But particularly when it comes in the obstacle position, which is essentially what this one uh, has here. So there is an element here of presenting things politically in a certain way. But maybe those values aren't necessarily being lived up to, particularly in regards to things like wealth, luxuries, finance, etc. Stuff like that. Again, I'm just saying what I see. If we look here in we, in the middle position, we have the nine of wands, which, of course, you can see here. This is the card of struggle. It's about survival. It's about feeling embattled. Yeah. Having a fight. You can see the guy here has got his head bandaged. And actually, when I've read on Trudeau before, he's had the same card has come back for him. So what this tells me is that there is an element. I don't really know what's going on in Canada. But what this says to me is, is that this seems to be a very challenging time where he's having to fight either for his premiership, his position or that of his uh, parliament. Uh, and it's, it's, proving, it's proving difficult. However, this is a card of resourcefulness, uh, kind of trying to come through the other side. So, side. so this shows me that Trudeau is, is resourceful and whatever battle that he's fighting, he's obviously going to do his best to win that, that battle. So uh, uh, in terms of going back to the question, it's like, will they prorogue Parliament and call a general election? I would say maybe, but it depends how hard the fight becomes. Yeah. How hard the fight becomes. If we look here, it looks like there's some legal ramifications as well, because we have got the uh, King of Swords here. As you know, I also associate the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords with accounting and finance. But, of course, this can also deal lit quite literally with the law and legalities and stuff like that as well. So I think this is obviously uh, the, the issue being passed over to, uh, what is it, the uh, 
RCMP, so the Royal Canadian Montreal Police, yeah, that could be this them representing here. Uh, more messages coming through. Betty's just saying heartbreak, heartbreaking. So I think it's, I think there's more coming through with that hurricane, uh, Milton. Uh, but going back to uh, Canada, so look, this looks like yeah, some kind of legal action. This is definitely an element of the arm of the law being represented here, and of course, it's coming next to the card of embattlement. So this is serious. But then when we look here, the outcome card is the. Uh, Ace of Cups. And as you can see here, this card talks a lot about, uh, you know, wish, uh, wish fulfillment, uh, emotional happiness. We also have the Dove of Peace here. So what that what that says to me is, is that wh whichever is the liber liberal side, which I'm assuming is the Trudeau uh, government, they are embattled at this stage. They are going to have to face uh, at least some kind of uh, questioning or have to answer some kind of questions to the law. But if we look here, the outcome here is positive. So it could be um, that everything ends up uh, being OK or perhaps they call an early election and it, and it potentially goes in their favour. Again, I'm not politically aligned to any side uh, in this. I'm just reading the cards. So it looks like. After a time of uh, intense stress and sh struggles, maybe it's going to work out for the incumbent government of Canada. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. All right, let's now move on to Laura Luma. And I should be able to cover a bit more ground today because, of course, I'm not normally I'm reading the, um, the live chat. All right. So C Coco Cooks asks, just realized Laura Luma seems to have disappeared or or just the press has stopped giving her attention what's going on there has trump distanced himself from her all right so let's see if we get my usual trumpy cards which is uh, for duck Lorange. uh well you know he can be several things sometimes he shows up as the devil uh or as one of the king cards normally the king of pentacles uh, or the star card, which, you know, is my is my my shadow interpretation of the star card, which deals uh, with the narcissist, not just for him, for a lot of these global leaders. But let's have a look. So let's read on this Laura Luna, sorry, Luma, who does seem to be a little bit of a lunatic, to be honest. Uh, from what I understand, one of the things she said uh, about Kamala Harris, which is just a complete disgrace, she said... Um, what did she say? She said, if Kamala Harris wins and becomes president, she said, the White House will stink of curry. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just beyond. I mean, it's just absolute schoolyard shite. Shite. That's what it is. Utter shite. Um, and it's just not worthy of the political field, irrespective of... Um, you know, it's just and so racist and derogatory saying it would become a core cool house to, you know, the White House would become a core cool house to India and stuff like that. It's just, you know, I could say stronger words, but I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just going to leave it there. You know, it's utterly ridiculous. Even even. Um, even Marguerite Taylor Green came out or just like. You need to. What are you doing? You are bang out of order. Even Marjorie Taylor Greene called her out. So if you're getting called out by Margaret Taylor Greene, you know, for being, you know, racist and inappropriate and stuff like that, you know, you really need to, you know, you really need to check yourself. <laughs> you know, not that I want to give MTG too many compliments, but at least she she drew a line there and was very vociferous. She was like, "You need to shut up. That is just out of order and it's absolutely outrageous." So let's see on this. Laura Luma, this Laura Looney bin, and see also as well what the Bard thinks. So what's going on with her relationship with Duck Larange? Is she still there or has she been ditched? All right, Laura Luma.
Interesting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> On a, uh, these cards, sometimes, you know, sometimes the cards are ambiguous and sometimes they just write in graffiti. Yeah, so clear what this is all about. I've pulled five cards as usual, and of my five cards that I have pulled, four of them are pentacles. Tells you exactly what this is about. So here we are. She's being come. She's been now. Remember as well, this is also the card of studentship. Yeah, being a student. Uh, you know, researching, working hard towards a goal, a shared collective. You know, something like that. By the way, you can see the person here working hard. But, of course, he's pounding away on coins, yeah? So she's been brought in, essentially, to fundraise, yeah? Raise money, uh, educate, or at maybe at least reflect the opinions of the target audience. So, really, this is why she's been drafted in. It's very connected. If we look at the obstacle position, just in case we weren't sure, look at this. We get the Six of Pentacles. But, really, this is just reinforcing the first card. This is about what? Fundraising. Yeah. Fundraising here in this picture, you can see the merchant who is benevolently donating. Yeah. To those less fortunate than himself. But of course, this is technically turning what in the reverse position. Yeah. Because the second position is often seen as the obstacle card in my five card spread. If we we're talking about nice people, it'd be reinforcing. But we're not talking about a good person here, are we? So this is the card when it's reversed, which isn't uh, about uh, donations and being benevolent. It is about being manipulative. Yeah. And it can deal with corruption, corrupt money. And in this case instance here, if we think of it literally when it's upside down, the money comes from the poor into. Yeah. The merchant. So she's been she's been employed to extract those, extract money from those who um, buy into her shtick. Yeah, this is this is about the base. This is about um, getting them rattled and enraged. And, you know, so they what they make the donations. Yeah, because this way the money's going down. But this way the money's coming up or into the merchant. Yeah, this is this is why she's. Uh, She's been employed, just in case if we weren't sure. Look at the middle card. <laughs> Ace of Pentacles, yeah? Which, again, is talking about what? Big money. So, for example, if you're wondering if a financial venture that you're about to explore or you're launching a new business and you're wondering if it was going to be successful, if it was going to make any money, this is the card that you want to see, yeah? This is like a big yes for money. So, obviously, she's been employed as i said already to raise funds raise money from who the base yeah the people down here that are maybe more in a bit of a desperate situation or you know whatever their situation is but they're trying to wring out the pockets let's not forget as well that the ace of pentacles the shadow of this card can also talk about fool's gold not all that glitters is gold as they say but again she's there to raise money just in case we weren't sure on the next card, she gets the Three of Pentacles. Now, this is the card of collaboration, yeah? Working together on a plan. So, of course, uh, you know, Duck Larange and whoever has teamed up with her, whether or not she's still there, we don't know. But either way, it was part of a concerted plan as part of, bank of the campaign to work together on the shared objective. You could also say as well, maybe these are the documents of what? Project 2025, huh? Yeah, they're literally holding a document in their hand, which is for plans. Yeah, here, these in this context, it will be an architectural uh, plan, quite literally, because, of course, he's helping to construct everything. But this can be any plan. This could be a manifesto. Yeah. So for me, when I look at this, particularly in the context of Laura Luma, this is talking about Project 2025. And clearly, she's probably very closely affiliated. In fact, she... I think she has been shown to have very close affiliations with that group. So really, she is there to help execute the plan of Project 2025. Yeah, she's been drafted in to contribute her work and her education. Yeah, to extract, yeah, extract the money from those that can probably least afford it. 
she's enticing them. She's uh, A, wanting to boost the coffers, but a lot of this could be fool's gold. Yeah, and they're working together on a plan, a manifesto to execute something. But what are the natures of that plan? If we look here, it is the Seven of Cups, which is what? Delusion. Yeah, delusion. She is a delusional character and the plans themselves are likely delusional as well. We'll see here with this famous Seven of Cups, you see that it's full of all... Look, there's a dragon down here, there's some fake jewels here, there's a ghost, there's a severed head. There's all sorts of strange things going on. This person is discombobulated, not sure which way to turn but this is also when we talk about the context of the plans if we anyone who's read project 2025 a it is bonkers but they are they do want to insist on this so for those that don't know please have a read through and you don't even have to read that much to be honest there's praises online and it's an absolute horror show yeah it's basically um I mean, one of the things I would say is this is particularly as well, if you're a woman, it's like, do you really want the state monitoring your menstrual cycles? Yeah. Keeping a tally and a record of your uh, miscarriages, if you're unfortunate enough to experience one. And even if you are having one, you can't have a, a safe termination. You know, you just kind of have to bleed out. Many women have been dying already and stuff like that. Um, so this is also as well, I think, talking about the wider confusion just in general. Uh, there's so much gaslighting, so much gaslighting coming from so many different directions. You know, it's hard for people uh, to be clear. But when I look at this, this plan, it's a crazy plan. Yeah. And uh, Laura Luma is a lunatic. But let's just. Um, let's just see what the bard thinks yeah let's see what the bard thinks so for those of you who may be watching me for the first time i read from this little booklet here the link is in the video description below and it's called shakespeare the bard's guide to uh, the bard's guide to abuses and affronts and what it is it's full of quotes from the bard's famous plays yeah and whenever i want an opinion the bard's opinion on someone who is usually an unsavory character um I close my eyes and I flip to a page in the book. And when it's on Hogley and I, or I have guests, I get them to tell me where to stop. So let's get the Bard's opinion on Laura Luma. All right. Wow. This is interesting. All right. So this is from Love's Labour's Lost. Very interesting. All right. So in this in this card, it says his, but I will uh, swap in for she or her. Her intellect is not replenished. She is only an animal, only sensible in the duller parts. Yeah, and that's from Love's Labour's Lost, so you can work that out for yourself. And then the next one from Richard III says, Thou elvish marked abortive rooting hog. Yeah, from the rich or from Richard III. And isn't it interesting? It says elvish marked abortive rooting hog. Yeah, and that's one of the key things going on with that project 2025 that I was talking about. One of the key important things in this election, not the only issue, of course, but a significant one. Yeah. So you can see that for yourselves. That's the Bard's opinion. Right. Let's move on. <clears throat> so that's Laura Luma. Let me just cross off the ones that I've done. So coming up, of course, so we've done Hurricane. We've done Canada. Laura Luma. Let's squeeze in. How am I doing on time? OK. Let's do the world read in 2025. African history be interesting to squeeze in SpaceX and US elections in general. All right, so let's speed up a little bit. Let's now this is coming from Manuela Orchid. You know who you are. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And for those of you who are watching this video, if you are yet to like and subscribe, please do. It's much appreciated. Uh, helps the channel grow. 
and improve its reach. So if you've been enjoying the videos, you've been watching me for a while, please consider uh, subscribing because there are, I have many, many more people that watch my videos than actually uh, subscribe. I mean like multiple thousands <laughs> more in comparison to how many people subscribe. So it'd be nice if that number was a little bit more reflective, wouldn't it, of the people who are actually watching. So if you've not done so yet, please do so and hit the bell notification and please like and share. Thank you. All right. The world in 2025. Let's see what's going on. Uh, I think it's challenging for America, you know, for whoever wins, to be honest. Whoever wins is not going to be easy. The world. The world. Oh, let's have a look. So if you guys would like uh, that book, there is a link below which goes to Amazon USA, I think. You can just click for your own country. And it is a superb little book. The world. Let's see what's going on in the world. How interesting. Mm. Two major arcana here. Remember this card? Mm -hmm. King of Pentacles. Do you remember I said this is uh, associated with uh, late leaders, normally male leaders? If we see here, look, it's about the money. Again, it's the money. You've heard of me talking about lobbyists, yeah? Lobbyists. Or patriarchs who are basically they've got a lot of success you know what for me these are the these are the millionaires but particularly the multi-billionaires that are basically shaping world politics yeah shaping world politics effectively lobbying their will on the rest of everyone here on planet earth you know let's just keep it basic if we look here in the obstacle position we have the wheel of fortune so of course the wheel of fortune what is this talking about now this is turned up in the obstacle position yeah. Now, when it's the right way up, it says basically a person or persons are more inclined to luck. Yeah, more inclined to luck. But we're reading on the world. Yeah. And it's turned up in the obstacle position, which means this card is actually like this. But what it means is the little devil is on top, which unfortunately it does mean it's more inclined to less luckiness. Yeah. So what we have, the way I'm interpreting this, we've got here are very wealthy persons, especially in the billionaire class, that are trying to what? Impose their will and change the what? Fate and fortune of the earth. But it's more inclined to a little bit more negative outlook. I wish I could be more positive, but look at the next card. Yeah. Again, I'll just read the cards. It's a devil. Yeah. So let's cover the naughty bits. Look, we've got the devil here. So what we've got here is malevolent. Yeah. People of influence and power imposing their will uh, on the fortunes of the face of the world in a likely a more negative way. And just in case we weren't sure, we get the devil. So let's not forget the devil isn't just about being chained to things, although it does deal with that. The devil can talk about being chained to I ideas thought patterns emotions yeah this is also a card that can deal with uh, obsession psychosis ill health mental ill health physical um health uh it can deal with debauch debauchery depravity you never want this card showing up yeah you can see just look at the guy yeah it's the devil so what is this what this is saying to me is is that so much of this billionaire class, I'm not saying they're all terrible, but what this tells me is that a lot of these lobbyists, they just do not have good intentions. They just don't. 
They want to bend the world to their will in a more negative way. We think how many people are supporting Project 2025 and all of this kind of stuff. But it's not just Project 2025. There's a ton of projects that a lot of very powerful and influential people are trying to bend to their will. It's just that with Project 2025, they just wrote the whole thing down. Yeah, <laughs> they wrote down the men. The manifesto. This is how we want to screw everyone over and turn this into, you know. Anyway, however, let's look at the next two cards, both of which are aces. Now, remember, aces tend to be big yeses, but they're also affirmations. They're, they're big action cards. So if we look here, though, we have the sword of truth. Thank goodness. Yeah. Coming out next to the devil. So what this is to me is, is that irrespective of the machinations and manipulations of these powerful entities and organizations, they won't all be men, but mainly, mainly so, the sword of truth is there, which is what? The no BS, cutting through, the sword of truth is slicing through, yeah, some of these devilish intents, and it's starting to become clearer to people what is going on, at least for those who are paying attention. Irrespective of what political party you support anywhere in the world, think of follow the money. Always look who the lobbyists are. This is really what's behind a lot of this. And more and more people are starting to see that truth. It's not necessarily good for politics because a lot of people are preferring not to vote at all, which ultimately doesn't really achieve anything. You may as well use it but, yeah, truth is there. Then the outcome card is the ace of wands. So this is talking about action. So what this is to me is globally, because we're seeing so much happen in the world, this addiction to running the world as it is. Yeah, a lot of these billionaires attached to these old ideas and concepts. A lot of them are not well. Yes, yeah? psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually unwell. Yeah, some of them, quite a lot of them are psychopaths with this malintent for the future of the earth because they just want to protect their wealth and their assets. However, the truth of this is becoming, becoming so much clearer and we're going to see more action. I think more and more people are going to want to stand up, particularly as well once we see, sadly, the results of what is likely to be this devastating hurricane in Florida. <clears throat> that veneer, that gaslight is going to work less and less well because it's like it's just like it's like being beaten you know it's like it's like if you, it you know at a certain point after being beaten up so much you have to start thinking about your life you're either going to stay and die or you're going to what get out yeah you're going to have to try and escape so um yeah so i think there's going to be more action in the world as more and more people grasp the truth. How am I doing on time? Let's read on African history. OK, uh, DJP says recently YouTube have stopped uh, sharing parts, parts, posts from creators providing content regarding Africa and its history slash progress. Can the cards explain why? Let's have a look. Could be some of those vested interests that I was talking about before, huh? Let's have a little look. Oh, and then I need to have a bit of something to eat after this. Have a bit of lunch, methinks. Oh, and I can go to the gym because I've got my tracksuit bottoms back now. Yay! All right. Why would they be holding back on this? Now, African history is extraordinarily rich and very much underreported. It's not just the Egyptians, you know, that did cool stuff. You know, what is now, you know, Sudan, Ethiopia. I mean, Ethiopia is extraordinarily important in terms of global history, particularly for Christendom as well with their uh, the Coptic, the Coptic religion etc but it's not just religion it's culture it is music it is food uh there's been such a culture of subjugation internationally of america of africa and exploitation and pillage i think it's hard 
for anyone who's not been there and I've not been there yet to fully appreciate the richness, you know, of the of, of the culture. It's not just starving babies with flies in their eyes. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Interesting. All right. So straight away, what's this all about? It's essentially about patriarchal control. Yeah. Interesting. Similar in the, in the similar energy. And it's the first one, but also as well, this is also a religious leader, a thought leader here. It's technically the Pope. So what this is showing me here is that there is an element of maybe an organized religion about this as well. So there might be, um, again, in the context of a global influence, like with the previous cards, where is the money going? So what this is showing to me, this is probably more likely to be a Christianity, of course. I mean, it is a, a Roman uh uh, it's the pontiff, yeah. So of course that is the um, uh, Roman Catholic. But this is uh, this is also talking about, I think, faith and stuff like that in general in Africa. There are uh, quite Christian laws there and stuff like that, which actually have absolutely nothing to do with many of the original cultures of Africa, which essentially have been uh, suppressed. Yeah. So the whole Christianity thing and stuff like that, that was never part of uh, Africa's shtick. That came, of course, with colonization and stuff like that. So isn't it interesting that there? this is also talking potentially about, you know, colonization, etc., subjugation of Africa, where religion has been very much used uh, uh, as that as that tool. Whereas the native uh, religions of Africa, I'm sure they're still there, but they are, you know, it it. it it's not there at that state level because you're either Christian, you know, there's Christianity, but of course there's also Islam, but religion is a big factor uh, in Africa. But what this could show is there may be patrons or people of influence that might be su suppressing more of this original story. If we look here, we've got the Five of Cups, which talks about loss, heartache, you know, betrayal. Uh, the cups are down, but there are still two cups up. So what this is saying is, yeah, there might be an element of here of betrayal that people may feel in terms of being able to get their content there, but they should not give up. There are still two cups there. So they might have to go on to other platforms to get their stuff um, heard. However, if we look here in the middle card, look at this, we get the sun card, which is the card of truth and enlightenment. Um, bringing things to light so whoever is a content producer producing this kind of stuff which can what illuminate educate people bring enlightenment don't give up keep going there are many uh, alternatives email listings etc and stuff like that so don't give up hope you know there's a great thirst here I think people are beginning to realize however we look here though we do have the four of swords now this card here is actually quite a completative a meditative uh, a card uh, normally though in um, when I'm reading on political uh, things this this can also I I do this card has come to mean the card of career endings for me yeah so maybe some people are finding their content has been ended but this is also a card of reflection and contemplation so with the sun card I think this is more about the illumination will make people reflect more on their views on Africa, maybe being less stereotypical. And then if we come here, the outcome card is the King of Wands. Now, uh, I associate the, the wand suit uh, with entrepreneurialism and particularly as well this one with, you know, CEOs, leaders. Same thing as well for the Queen of Wands. So I think what is it's going to be enterprise ultimately and uh, business which will be the ultimate uh, liberating factor, shall we say, from Africa, if they can uh, keep a lid on the, uh, obviously, the corruption and stuff, and if they can get leaders that are more for uh, the country. Of course, there are political and colonial issues for reasons that uh, Africa hasn't been able to fully uh, free itself, unshackled, but this is showing me that the future really is business. Africa is doing tremendous things, making tremendous progress in business and in culture. So don't give up hope if you're one of those um, providers of information. What I would say is make sure you've got your mailing list and uh, you're reflecting, Four of Swords, reflecting on your content and how to get it to those that need it. OK, so there's that. So we've done the world 2025. 
<clears throat> SpaceX issues. I think I'm going to look at the US, uh, US elections in general. Otherwise, this video will be too long because we're already at three minutes and something. And I've got to join the video together. It's now 55. So I'm going to do the US election read. SpaceX, uh, I'll have to read on on the next show. Someone was wondering uh, because... <clears throat> Some of the rockets haven't been doing so well if it was sabotage, but I think it's probably more important to read on the general in the US elections. Let's take a look. Thank you so much, everyone, for all the support over the years, for you being with me, for all of the comments, even some of the shady ones. But anyone knows if they throw some shady comments, at you, you're going to get some shit back. So, you know, but I understand not everyone is going to give universal praise. And that's not really, that's not what it's about. It's not why I started my channel. All right. U.S. elections. Let's see what spirit has to say. U.S. elections. What's the energy now? This may not necessarily say who's going to win, but it's going to be more about the energy. From what I've seen recent polls, it still has it pretty much neck and neck. Kamala, of course, has gone a, come a long way, of course, since her campaign began. But there's still a lot of people out there that aren't convinced. And if they don't agree with you, you know, it's... I, You know, I speak to and I meet a lot of uh, Americans. Most of my clients are in America or Canada. <clears throat> and there's a lot of Americans on this ship. And not all of them are Democrat, yeah? A lot of them are independents. Uh, I mean, most of them are Democrat, but you've got independents and you've got some Republican as well. And I listen to everyone. Yeah. Without judging, without judging, have to listen to everyone. Gives you a much broader picture. Mm. Ah, but for who? All right. Interesting cards. <clears throat> Moon card. Yeah, as we know, nothing is clear by moonlight. And as you've heard me say before, <clears throat> but this card is reinforcing that again. It may not be clear who is the winner when we reach the 6th of November. Yeah, with the moon, nothing is clear by moonlight. You remember I said it's going to be strange. It's going to be unconventional. It's going to be unusual. Strange things will likely happen. Uranus, who is currently retrograde in the sky, will be exactly on the star, the star of treachery, our goal. From the 5th to the 6th of November, in fact, the whole week is going to be a, 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 a around there. In fact, he actually, you know, 5th and 6th is when he's perfectly on the star, 7th, 8th, etc. He's really, really close. So that whole couple of weeks... He's really close on that star. So straight away we get the moon here. So something weird may uh, happen again. We've got this fi primal fight between the domesticated dog, which we could maybe see as maybe the, you know, the rational path of democracy and the wild untamed wolf. Yeah, that doesn't want to have any control at all. We have the lobster coming out. Yeah, which for me is always the surprise. We're getting already some October surprises already. I think one of them is this hurricane. And then, of course, revelations, of course, have recently come out about Duck Lorange sending uh, um, Vladimir Putin um, COVID tests and stuff like that before they were available for, to everyone else in the world. So and, uh, you know, the pr private phone calls and stuff. So for those that are still protesting and saying, ah, oh, you know, it's fake. He didn't have any connections with Russia and stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, like, this has been very much debunked now. We need to move on and actually understand just how much of affiliation, affiliation Duck Lorange does have with, with Russia. It's, it's just looking a bit silly now to try and deny uh, these things when it's, it's well known. You know, no one's saying that, you know, I mean, if, if he can talk to whatever leader he wants when, when, he's, when he's the leader of the free world, but there just needs to be a bit more honesty, yeah, uh, about this and reality about what that actually means. So anyway, but yeah, so there's going to be lots of uh, Michigan's unusual things and probably people trying to manipulate outcomes, of course. If we look here in the obstacle position, we have the Three of Pentacles, which again is the card of collaboration. Do you remember what I was talking about? Project 2025. 
<clears throat> you see how this applies in this context again. So look, they're going to be collaborating, obviously, to swing things the way that they want. This uh, is a card of collaboration, but when it turns up in the obstacle position, it means it's more like this, which means it's a bit more corrupt. So this can talk about dark money, corruption, dark alliances to what? Maybe swing the result in their favor. Yeah. So there's going to be cheating. Yeah, there really is. There are people really going to be trying to do this. <clears throat> They're going to be going for this aggressively. Yeah, look, we got the sword, uh, the Knight of Swords here. So there is going to be a, a, a an aggressive campaign to discombobulate. Yeah, confuse, which has a dark agenda of collaboration and it's aggressive. So <clears throat> what we could see is we could see people trying to incite violence at the very least. Yeah, over this election uh, time period. You may have people that just take stuff into their own hands and go totally batshit and just do mad, mad stuff. Anyway, someone's going to win. Yeah, so we do have the victory card. We do have the victory card. Uh, a clear winner will be established at some point. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles as well. Which, of course, aces are yes cards. So let's hope it's the positive and not the fool's gold. Yeah. Let's hope it's not the fool's gold that wins. But that this is hopefully leading maybe to a bright and prosperous future for America. This is how I would like uh, that future for America to be. So let's hope it's not the fool's gold and that this is actually a new dawning awakening where America can pass through the archway of this into a bright and optimistic future. Yeah. So there you are. I'm going to call it quits there. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined me. I'm going to get this uh, posted up and um, I will blah, 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 blah. Thursday. Oh, no. Hogali is the next one. So I'll be doing that in Japan. Hopefully, well, I don't think I'll be on water anymore. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. I hope you enjoyed uh, that reading. I'll have to read on SpaceX, maybe for the Hogali coming up. So big love, everyone, uh, here from mid-Pacific Australia, Brisbane time, which should really tiggle. <laughs> That should tickle Lena, shouldn't it? And uh, anyway, I will see you all soon. Bye-bye for now.